Hi folks, I wanted to cover this topic of managing food supply for vegetarian survivors. For example, Samantha in this case, who refuses to eat meat. Seems it's causing a lot of concerns for the community in general. And for me, I have always played with a vegetarian survivor. Like Samantha is my go-to survivor, either in online or offline mode. So I thought, why not to share the experience? Also, just to add, she is my preferred last survivor for the game as well. And just for the reason that she develops in such a way that she can take care of each and every skills which we need as a survivor. Having said that, when we start the game, the first thing which we can do is observe these Heptagonia plants and one vegetable plant. So for example, in Desertum, you have these barrel cactus and in the other map, I think it was pumpkin. So you observe these two plants and you farm them. You plant them and harvest them. That's literally the first thing we do in the game. The good thing is that the food produced from these options are for both veg and non-veg survivors. So you are not wasting any efforts in getting these up and running. Especially early on, Heptagonia plant is your best friend. We can harvest it from open world and it produces great quantity of food. It produces the sweet syrup. So once you have these two up and running, the next thing which you can focus on is pickling. Pickling is a research and then you can come to these fermentation barrels and you can set up pickling for the vegetables which you harvest. For example, if you see on the right hand side, you can pickle raw vegetables where the group includes all the different kind of vegetables. Now, in my case, I'm only harvesting these barrel cactus. So what I have done is for these barrels, I have said that keep creating pickled vegetables forever. So as soon as you get any vegetable in the storage, you convert them into pickle. And the reason being that these pickled vegetables, if you see their shelf life outside 24 days under roof, 48 days. That is one whole year of this game. And when it is refrigerated, it's indefinite. So you do it once and you forget. Okay. So this is another tip which I would share with you that go with pickling as soon as you can, especially if you're having a veg survivor. Now, for early or mid game, what you can also do is observe grain, which produce wheat. For example, I have these two wheat plants or wheat farms with me. The good thing about wheat is that wheat adds a lot of options to your cuisines. For example, porridge, grain syrups, it adds a drink, ale as well, and you can make coffee from it as well. So as you can see, you get a lot of options by planting this one particular resource, which is wheat. And it is more of a early mid game. So if you, if you're comfortable planting all the three heptagonia, barrel cactus and wheat, everything all together, then go for it. But uh, what I usually do is I start with barrel cactus and heptagonia and then I go for wheat during early or mid game. With these options, you will have variety bonus from your survivors that I can guarantee. If you can get all these things through, then you will definitely get a variety bonus. Remember to make these grain sweet syrup as well they are an alternative to your heptagonial sweet syrup. So grain is a very strong resource in this game, in my opinion, especially with the vegetarian survivor. You can make ale here. On the cooking items, you can have bread. Once you get into oils and fats, you can make porridge. There are just so many things which you can do with grain. So early mid game, go for wheat. Now in mid game, especially once you get your fifth or sixth survivor, that is you have one more survivor who can help with crafting. In that case, you can start crafting oil and fat. So you can go to this wooden oil press and you can start crafting animal fats and vegetable oils. And what these will do, they will open up 
another set of tasty recipes for example bread meat pie okay meat pie is non veg but vegetable is too so by doing that crafting you will open up so many recipes that you can't cook everything your cook won't be able to prepare everything and you can see right now that let's say if i take samantha who is my vegetarian survivor and i go to happiness you can see that she is happy about having enough food variety and rita who is my uh, non vegetarian survivor she's also happy about having enough food variety so that's the best thing about having these combinations that once you have these up and running especially by mid game then there are so many options in terms of fooding that you don't even have to worry about it it becomes like uh, an automated thing so if you set your priorities right for example rita is always planting and samantha and quinn are always harvesting with this combination what i'm able to do is is generate a continuous supply of food for all my survivors especially vegetarian survivors one tip is that uh, at early game it is suggested that we turn off the consumption of raw food however i usually turn raw food consumption on for my vegetarian survivor and the reason is that most of the infections that happen by eating raw food happens due to meat however with samantha not eating meat i'm happily able to activate this raw food consumption for her however for other survivors i just turn it off because they will eat meat and then there will be troubles they will lose time in recovery the game is all about this balancing act a balance between not doing everything at once versus not doing something at all keep trying guys it's it's just an experimentation i'm pretty sure uh, you will find a balance which works really well for you and then you won't have to exclude someone just as good as samantha from your list of survivors and i hope this short video would give you some ideas on how to manage a vegetarian survivor effectively do also share if i have missed anything thanks and game on guys